Hi, everybody. I am Jody Pear, and this is Kirsten Steno. <laughs> I am Hi, everybody. So, oh my gosh. She is our first guest on Home with Intention. And you may notice Kathy is not with us this morning, um, but that is because there's a difference in our time zones. Kirsten is in Denmark. I am in uh, the Detroit area in Michigan. Kathy is in Chicago. <laughs> so anyway, um, Kirsten is my teacher and I met Kirsten um, in, we were just talking about time, in 2015, I saw a video interview of you with your friend, Cheryl Barr, and I loved everything that you were saying, and I, I connected with you. I sent you an email, and you responded from yes. Denmark. <laughs> Yes, I did. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so happy I did. Me too. And here we are all these years later. And yes. I have learned so much from you. And I just can't think of a better um, first guest to have on the show. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm honored to be part of it. Thank you. So Kirsten, you are standing in your dining room. And so I, I am. just want you to tell people a hint of your philosophies and your thoughts about creating a meaningful home. Yes, I would love to. Thank you, Jody. Well, I work first of all as an interior designer and I loved every day of it, creating beautiful practical spaces. And then I came across clients who had difficulties making decisions like about colors, couples who are fighting over a dining table and people who have kind of lost the connection with their home. And then I thought there's got to be something beyond this, like design, design rules, people being so afraid of making mistakes, design mistakes. So I thought, but who made those rules? And it turned out it was designers and architects who made those rules to make people dependent on them. So I thought, why not do something more, like something deeper than design? And then I started with my teacher, Martha Beck, who is a, a columnist at Oprah Winfrey. And I saw her on TV and when I approached her with an email explaining that house is a mirror of yourself and that all the self-help books that I have read, including hers, uh, Finding Your Own North Star, that I realized that whenever I would take the word home and replace it with you in the text, it would make complete sense to me. So after I studied with Martha Beck and became a life coach, I call myself a house coach because I had the home part, the house part was taken care of, and now I had the coaching part. But it was very hard to find clients in the beginning because they didn't know, what are you? Are you feng shui? Or are you psychologist? Or is it spiritual? What's going on? And I said, no, I just want you to detach from the limiting thoughts and come down to your heart because there you will find all the answers. Then I had the first newspaper, uh, my book, I published a book and all of a sudden people began understanding and I too got better at explaining what I was doing. So I used the, the Maslow pyramid of needs to say that we in the bottom need a functional place, everybody needs that. And it has to function very well, be close to where we work. Like if the school is an hour away, we're not gonna buy a house in that area. So there are many things that we're taking into consideration. Then we want to put our name on the mailbox and we're saying, I'm going home, which is a privilege that not everybody has today. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Beautifying, buying flowers, candles, everything. It's still interior design. It's practical. It's beautiful. But what you are doing, Jody, and what I taught you, and you took it to your own level, mm -hmm. um, that is to have the values of the people displayed in the room mm -hmm. and also to dissolve the limiting thoughts like, I don't have any time, I don't have any money, and what if my husband doesn't like it? And yeah. you know, there are millions of those and I have them myself. So coaching people out of that, they're kind of, wow, is that why we couldn't buy that dining table? Wow, I didn't know that because as a child, I bought something that I regretted, that now it takes two years to find a sofa. And there are so many wonderful stories in house coaching. Mm -hmm. And then when you do what you do, decorate with intention. And you place objects that has 
the meaning for you and you know what it is and it fills your home with so much joy, that's when you connect with your inner phone, like with your Wi-Fi, when you enter the home, you immediately start recharging. And that's what we, the people today need, especially during the COVID period when we've been confined, yes. to connect with their home, recharge, and get new energy from the home. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. That is, uh, Welcome. I just can't put it in the words the, the way you do. <laughs> And as I'm listening to you say that, I'm, I'm remembering some of my own limiting thoughts as a designer, as an interior designer, yes. to kind of make that shift to really focus on teaching people the power of decor. Yes. Oh my gosh, that alone is like, but, but wait, I'm a, I'm a designer, like I know yes. more. Yes. <laughs> and it's yes. like, is that fluffy? Is that... Um, is that unimportant? Is the decor unimportant? But no, that is the most important. And yes, design comes into it. So thank you. Yes. I mean, it's, it's funny how that alarm still goes off in my head a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I know right now we're pitching this TV docu-series and I'm, that's why I'm so used to explaining what I do. It's not feng shui. Yes, it's spiritual if you are, but it's actually about finding the heart in your home and connecting with it because everybody knows the metaphor of a phone. Like mm -hmm. we are looking for the charger always to find more energy as the human beings. Yeah. And we know that if we don't have to charge it for our phone, it will just go without battery and has no purpose at all. Yeah. And we want to have purpose in our lives. And that's what we can get in and via the home, which still strikes me as something of the most beautiful. Yes. And the, one of the, um, this quote, I don't know if it's a quote or a philosophy. I have to get in, into my notes just to, so I say it properly, but um, looking at something beautiful has the power to shift your, your energy. It improves your well being, your mindset, just the simple act of looking at something beautiful and yes. something beautiful can be a tiny little, Oh, a candle. You know, it could be something, I have my, my candle burning. It could be something so simple as that, or it could be something really um, grand, you know, and on a bigger level, like the wall that is behind you. Yes. That it's, you want, your house is the place where you can change your energy and boost yourself yes. up. And so, um, yeah, so my example of the tiny candle to your grand example of the wall, it's, it doesn't matter. And there is so much in between. Yes. So if I just step back, uh, I hope you can see the wall. I can. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but I would like to go close. So I'm just grabbing my phone. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Here we go. And showing you here. Well, this was a wall that could have had a color or something else, but I wanted it to tell a story. And the story that I wanted to tell uh, is from a book that the previous owners, they gave us when we moved in. Here it is. It says in German, happiness to live in the midst of nature. And that's what we do. Mm. So I gave this book to my friend and I said, can you paint that on the wall? Uh, and she said, sure, and took a pencil and started just making little drawings. They're still there, some of them, uh, which I love that the pencil is still there. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. And look at the detail. Yes. <gasps> and it takes some boldness to just paint directly on a wall. But I think it's all worth it because it's a masterpiece. Even the small birds. Yeah. Mm. And here, a little butterfly. So when I open to the kitchen, and we might meet Brunello now, <laughs> my, my Labrador, but that's what I can look at in my kitchen. I still have those doors as paintings when I open it. Mm. So here it is a little gloomy, but when I'm in my kitchen, this is what I look at. Ah, oh, stunning. And that makes me super happy, yeah. which is what it's all about. Yes. Yeah. How does Frank feel about that wall? 
Frank wasn't too keen on it in the beginning. <laughs> <But> <laughs> he thought it was really bold to go and paint directly on the wall because what if we regret? Oh. And then I coached him with the thought, so how do you feel when you believe that regretting is something bad? And how would you act if regret is something that is really bad? Mm. And turn it around to, if I change my mind and I have new ideas and new adventures, I just go and paint it all over again. Maybe I do another color, maybe I do another theme. Because I know on the top 10 list of what I'm coaching, the fear of regret is just number 10 on the top. So I'm used to that one. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Regret, but then also the male perspective. I think oh, so yeah. many of us, so many women are, you know, if, if we're, we're married and, and, or sharing our space with, with a man, yes. Oh I, yes, we, <laughs> we fear that maybe that's too feminine or, you know, and that they're not going to like that. Yes. But I feel and that's like why I want to show you the whole room okay. to tell you about the 40, 40, 20. Ah, wonderful. Yes. Yeah. So what is this? Frank uh, has a history. We are, we are a patchwork family. So I was married before. I lived alone. He was married. He lived alone. And then we met 20 years ago. Mm. And I, when I moved in with him, I invented the tool 40, 40, 20. That means he had to let go of 60% of his belongings. I had to let go of 60%. And those were things that he did not like, like shabby chic, French, Madonna's. And I didn't like Philip Stark, uh, all that metal and leather. But there was one chair in particular. So I'm going to turn my screen. I guess I can do that. Very simple. So when you look into this beautiful room, it has the color setting of neutrals like naturals and beige and black and brown. And then we add 20% color. I like those percentages. Yeah. Here in the corner, that's Frank's corner. Mm. I've had women tell me I would kill to get rid of those chairs. Like I would really kill somebody. I would be able to do anything. And I don't like them either. I never have and I never will. But when Frank comes up in the morning, very early morning, he sits in this chair. He turns around and he looks at the city. When his daughter comes home from Copenhagen, she sits over there. And all the male visitors we have, they go there instantly to have a conversation with the fire on. Oh, so because wow. I love Frank, that's his 40. Yes. When you move over here, you have a sense we're, we're approaching Kirsten's 40. <laughs> 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 the shabby part, the yes. French lamp. And also this stunning uh, bookshelf that was here. It was dark blue. I painted it white. And then I put in a mirror where mm. there used to be a television so that I could tell the stories of our story. The books are 40% his, 40% mine, and we bought 20 together. This painting is Frank's. That means that this is the color tone that set the cushions that I like. Mm -hmm. And we chose the sofa because it has the color of our dog. Oh, funny. So it's practical. <laughs> yes, Brunello, <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, and here you see the whole, that the carpet brings out the color in the wall. This is one of my old dining table that I painted. And we bought this chair together because we made a compromise. Mm. So this is how it works. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. And your views are just absolutely spectacular. It is. <sighs> It's just, it's compromise. It, it, it's more than compromise. And I, I think that people um, would, would um, kind of quickly explain what you just, what you were just talking about as, yes, of course, we're going to compromise, but it's more than that. It is making sure that each person's soul is represented in the space. They find themselves there. It is not just compromise. And, and I myself thought that when I first heard you explain this, but it's so much more than that. And I think going through that exercise of making sure that you're both represented, I've had clients tell me that it gave them a new perspective on how they view their partner's clutter and their partner's um, chaos or, or, 
whatever the items that they don't Collectors. particularly like. like people who collect something yes 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 so you we don't understand home. Yeah, you both grow and learn from that experience. Yeah. So, so it is way more than, it's deeper than compromise. It is. And you know, I love Pinterest. I always have since the beginning. But for me, it's one of the best tools for practicing house coaching. Because I ask people first to send me, like if it's a couple, mm -hmm. six images of how you would really dislike, even hate to live. Mm -hmm. And then six images of what you love if anything was possible. Mm -hmm. And for both to do that, because three-dimensional, you'll absolutely be able to see what they could compromise on. And then six happy memories that they both have. Mm -hmm. And then decorate with intention accordingly mm -hmm. to those memories. That is so important because mm -hmm. we know what the posters down there, what they represent holiday. We know what this poster from Copenhagen represent our kids living in Copenhagen. Everything has an intentional purpose. Yeah. We know where it comes from and what it means. But also I can save that couple at least an hour of consultation because now I know what they're afraid of and we're not going there. Mm -hmm. We're not even getting close to those colors or types or styles we're only moving towards what they themselves picked up with their heart and that's why it becomes really enjoyable working with couples that it was not always when i was an interior designer i i fretted a little bit to be with couples mm -hmm. because they were taking out the fight in front of me oh. and i didn't really know how to handle the, the emotions yeah. because i wasn't the coach mm -hmm. yes yes it is a very powerful tool and it, you can quickly start to see what is in common, what they, the couple has in common, um, where, and it's, and it's even without us, if they just do that exercise, they can kind of start identifying that themselves. So yes, Pinterest is a very powerful tool. <laughs> Oh, and I'm going to, I'm going to stop us there because you have been so generous to let us into your home. And this has yeah. been, oh, this has been a fascination for me for all these years is to go behind the scenes into the designers homes. And here you are the founder of house coaching in this, this new, this movement that is happening in this brand new awareness that you have started and we get to see inside your home and it is stunning and thank, thank you for you. your time and it so helpful so helpful. such a pleasure whenever you need me back i'll be back there are more rooms to show <laughs> <laughs> and lots of stories where are many many more Ooh, stories yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you kirsten and please tell people where can they find you if they, they want to find your work more about you, where can they find if you? If they want to find more about me, of course, you can just start out Googling Kirsten Stino. A lot of things will pop up. You can go to my new homepage, homebystino.com. Yeah. And we also have a school where uh, Jody is part of, and that's the housecoachinginstitute.com. So if you're a professional watching and you feel, oh, I want to work with this, I feel the calling to it, we would love to hear from you. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much, Jody, for having me. It's been such a pleasure. I am so proud of where you took house coaching and really gave it your own really special touch. Thank you. Thank you, Kirsten. All right.